God provides. So why do I worry about my life? When you come to my rescue a thousand times, every other voice it is a lie. God provides, God provides in ways I can't explain and can't deny. The little that I have, He multiplies. Just when I feel He won't show up on time, God provides. He'll come through when the clouds of doubt rain down on you and test everything you thought you knew. Now you finally see what God can do for you. So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Watch God provide. God provides. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat. Or oh, what you see feels all that life will be. And will this be another year of misery for me? God provide, He will provide. God is building a new church at the right time, and God is right on time in doing it. Right? I don't know how much longer this building will hold up, so I can't wait for us to get over there. Do I have an amen? And we've been able to do that building. It's all because of your giving. And that's not taken lightly. And God has blessed the seed that you have sown. And I mean, we're a small church, but we're doing big things. And that shows that you're sowing into good soil, right? When you sow small seed into good soil, you get big crops. And this morning, I want to assure you that we have good soil here. So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight. Ooh, uh, watch God provide. Yeah, he will
fabulous. That's exciting news. Come on, y'all should be excited. Everybody should have ran around the church, did a lap around. Give me some church music. Give me a move. And to our brand new church. And when, when is this going to happen on? All right. Sunday, October the 1st at 1030. Right? First service. So we are ready. September 1st is gone. So wait a minute. That's what? Come on, somebody in this thing, that's when? Listen, a month. come on y'all, we've come a long way, we've come this far by man. All right. <laughs> beginning. It's a new season and it's a new future for us. Let God be in charge of our lives. A new beginning, new foundation. I'm reaching out to everyone present that right where you are now the end of the sermon, but now enter the end. That if you just call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved. 
not going to make it complicated. The pastors have been making it complicated over the years. It's been very simple in Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It said, if you call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it said, if you call on the name of Jesus Christ, you will be saved. In Joel chapter 2, verse 32, if you call on the name of Jesus, you will be saved. Nothing complicated. I want us to know today that myself and everyone present, it's a new season. Regardless of what you've been going through, it's a new foundation of the devil been telling you things in the past and say you're hopeless. Today you have hope in Jesus Christ. It's a new beginning. But it's up to you. You just need to trust God. I just want to share a testimony with you. How big and great our God is. You see my family in Christ Jesus, we are all God's children. Let me just tell you something. For every battle is always difficult. For every deliverance is not easy. But what we have to do now is trust God and say the battle is the Lord. God can destroy your giants. We've been fighting for too long to realize how great God is. The bigger the problem we have in life is the sweet of the victory. Is the sweet of the, did you get that? Hallelujah. We have to trust him today. I want to appeal to everyone how great God is as a loving God. Oh, God says in Numbers 23, verse 19, I'm not a human, so I cannot lie. I'm not a man, so I cannot be wrong. Then he says in same in Numbers 23, verse 19, have I ever promised you anything that I've not delivered? <laughs> I do have a witness in the house. I'm God. God is the one who did all this. 14 years ago, when I came in, I wanted to let you know that we came in when the overseer says to me, says, Pastor, we started our new church in Perry. Who remember Perry Middle School? Is anybody have anyone here from Perry Middle School? Come on now. We're going into history now. It's a new beginning. Started in Perry Middle School in the gymnasium. I think everyone in the congregation wanted to learn to play basketball. The overseer called and said, Pastor, I want you to sit down wherever you are. Because when I'm finished with you, you won't like me. He said, we have a church that is nine months behind in every bill. Nine months in a mortgage, that was $6,000 for that mortgage. He said, the utilities are behind. Everything was behind. We have witness in the house. Do you have any witness in the house? And he says, by the way, you're not going to like your office. I said, why? He said, because it's leaking. When we came to say our great God is in three months, the congregation paid off all the bills. Tell me that God won't provide. Oh, he's a great God. He's a great God. We must trust in him. See, today is the first of the month. It's the first day of the week. And it's the first service we're having in this great Solomon Stample. Can we give God praise? It's a first in everything. It's a historical moment. 
a great moment for anyone who is struggling I'm saying this there are many persons present today with disappointments discouragements every time you try oh somebody in the house know what I'm talking about every time you try to make it it's like you're stepping one foot backward trust God and you can go forward trust him and he will he will provide We arrived and I don't know what God did and put in my, my mouth that we're gonna build Solomon's temple churches have been a miracles after miracles after miracles I've been trembling in my pants all the month of September because I told everyone and you have been invited that we will open this church for the first service today I want to let you know when that was declared we were not given permission by the city of Pembroke Pines to move in. I think that's bold. I think that's an extraordinary fate. I think that's extreme fate. Many of my brothers and sisters did not get that. The city of Pembroke Pines did not give this pastor permission to move in October 1st. And I declared it in the month of September, the first week in September, I said we will have church today in the name of Jesus Christ. Do we trust him? Remember I'm saying that because all of us have adversities and disappointments, we must realize how God loves us. He loves us and he cares. He said in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, cast all your cares upon me. Not some of it. Cast all your words. Why don't we try to give him all to Jesus Christ? And watch him provide. That was bold. The only person knew is my wife that I had no permission to move in. We placed it on our bulletin. We have been inviting people to come out on the first. And all of the month of September, does anyone here know that you can speak to God like a friend? Do you know he's our best friend? Do you know he's our best friend? Anyone ever heard how Abraham would speak to God honestly from his heart? David almost cursed God out. Job did the same. Moses in Exodus, I'm going to give you a scripture to back it up. Exodus chapter 33 verse 12 to 17. Moses says, do you know the motor problem the children of Israel gave Moses? Can I tell you about it? The more he feed them is the more they grumble. I think some of us can identify with that. The more God blesses us, the more we get uncomfortable. That drove Moses crazy. And Moses said, listen, these are your people. You better come and get them because I'm tired of this. Yeah, Moses did that to God. You can read it, it's there. He said, these are, listen, I, I, I'm going to be ashamed to know the people in Egypt know that there are graves there. Why bring us out there to die? But you see, Moses could speak to God like that because God knows Moses' heart. He knows Moses loves him. He knows Abraham loves him. He knows Job loves him. God wants us to speak to him honestly. God doesn't like fakes. Whoops. God doesn't like pretenders. He wants us to be real to him. Hear what this homeboy did. Anyone heard that? I said, hear what this homeboy did. Uh-huh. Somebody got it. 
Somebody know to praise the Lord. We're going to have church in this place. You remember what I did, right? I declare something. But I learned one thing. Are you just talking it? Do anyone know about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7? We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by, by faith and not by sight. I'm keeping you in suspense. Because he just told me to bring another scripture to you. Today is a new foundation in your life. If you want it to be so. All you have to do is what called on the name of Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone complicate it. You just go to Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 13 and Joel 2 and 32 and you'll find it there. It's not complicated. I want to tell you something. I look at God and I say to him, don't embarrass me. <laughs> Come on somebody. I said if you embarrass your man servant, you're going to be embarrassed. Hey, we got to call, talk to God and tell him what you need. Tell him your needs. I did it. Sometimes my wife come in and she hear me in my closet praying. She says, who are you talking to? I said, just Jesus. Everyone, please, if you're going through struggles, disappointment, stress, hear this one. Today is your day. Today is your season. You can turn it around and watch God provide. And watch God provide. You can turn it around. Somebody can turn it around. Because our God, our God specializes in a new season. He's a specialist in new season. It's a new season. It's a new foundation you're going to have in your life. A refreshing moment. Don't let the enemy tell you that your past is your future. Tell the devil that only God can change my heart and erase my past. Only God can do that. No one else. he says very simply in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. I'm going to use the NIV version. If anyone is in Christ, anyone here today, just to select Jesus Christ as your Lord and but just, just in what? Call on his name. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new person. I know many of us learn the, the New King James Version that say he's a new creature, but I never liked the word creature. So let's change that to the NIV version or the NLT version. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new person. All the bad things you're doing before, put them behind you and go forward in the name. Forward! Forward! Hallelujah. Our God told, going back to Jacob, back to Joshua and Moses. Joshua didn't want the position. Joshua didn't want this miserable group of people. Yes, that Moses dealt with. Joshua need to be strengthened by God. He's a man of God, but now his leaders passing on the baton to him to lead his people. But we need to remember God is giving everyone here a new baton, a new flame to carry, a new torch to carry. Who wants a new torch? Who wants a new flame? Who wants a new fire? A new fire, a new life. Don't let the enemy mess you up. Because our God told Joshua, 
as he's telling us today. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Be of good courage. Because I'll never leave you nor abandon you. What a great God. He'll never leave you nor forgive. He'll never fail you. Oh, Almighty God, as he put scripture in my mind in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, as Pharaoh and his charioteers come off to destroy the children of Israel, our God say, I'll go ahead of you, and I'll never stop fighting for you. He'll never stop fighting for us. He'll never stop fighting for us. The battle is the Lord's. Never fail us nor abandon us. If God, if we have faith, faith means believing. If we pass to you that word so randomly and people don't know what it means. Faith means believing, even to something that hasn't yet arrived. I believe what I've been here this morning, and I declare it and decreed it, and God made it happen. Trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. Hallelujah. Can we just give God praise? God is a great God. Jeremiah 29 11. I have a brother and a sister here who gave us a plaque years ago. Over 20 years ago, I will still have that plaque on our desk. We have a very far, deep history. There are many here to enjoy today. But I remember Jeremiah 29, 11, one of my favorites when I was preaching all over the, the state. It says it very simple. I like the NIV version. Church, everyone that is here, listen to this. Why well, it's a new season. It's a new foundation. It's a new beginning in your life. If you're prospered, he's going to make him prosper even more. If you're having a famine today, I want to declare the famine is over in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me, please? Believe it. If you believe it, if you, that means faith. If you believe it, stand. If you don't, be seated. If you believe God can turn it around. Do you believe God can turn it around? Do you believe God can turn it around? Don't let the enemy lie to you. That goes as far as academics. No matter what your needs are medically, socially. That's so what God says. He said very simple. He wants to know that he declares your future. He wants to let you know that he declares your future. Nothing to hurt you. But he wants us to remind right now, as I paraphrase it, that we all have a bright future in Jesus' name. A bright future. A bright future. Believe it. Put your hands up. Believe it to receive it. Believe it to receive it. Declare you receive it. And all we have to do is a call on the name of Jesus.